Hey, how's it going? It's Walsh here, sick as always. Still feeling pretty sick from yesterday, but uh, getting a little bit better. Today, I'm going to be yet. bringing you kind of just a build update on the Ulm the Tall Berserker character. Now, this isn't really meant to be a guide, and I'm not trying to like encourage you to play it or anything like that. Though it is definitely viable for a lot of content, a lot more if you're on Trade League. Um, I don't want to like lead you down a build and then like in a couple days I realize, oh, this build caps out here and can't do whatever. So um, just approach the build cautiously. I'm going to show you what I've found out so far. Uh, I'm going to be playing it for the next few days as I try to gear up the Flame Blast character or the Skeleton character. Depends on, uh, you know, what I get first. But anyway, hope you enjoy the information and thank you for watching. So the first thing I really want to talk about is bossing. This character is pretty close to being on par with the Freezing Pulse character in terms of just raw damage. Uh, of course, the Freezing Pulse character has the advantage of having totems, so you can just stay far away and keep casting totems. But this character is only level 88 or 89, I think. I think it was 89 when I killed Awakener. My gems are only like level 17 or 18. Some of the ones in Bone Nova are only level 16 because I've been constantly swapping them out, experimenting with, you know, Chain, Fork, Volley, and all this stuff. And I gotta say, man, bossing has not felt bad yet. It hasn't felt, like, overwhelmingly amazing, but, like, when I did my Elder fight, I was really shocked at how easy it was to keep Shaper alive, because sometimes in the past I've played Cyclone characters, like, cast while channeling or something, and I just can't keep Shaper alive. But those Bone Nova projectiles really mess up his little adds and make it so much easier. So I will say it is important to remember you are a Berserker, so you take 10% more damage. And I will tell you, sometimes that makes it really hard to survive specific encounters. Like every once in a while on a T16 map, like let's say it's like occupied by, you know, the Hunter or like Baron or something. I'll just get blasted by like a extra fizz crit rare pack and i'll just be like oh okay but overall i don't die very much and i'm hoping to switch to petrified blood at some point but i mean i'm not really married to that idea yeah i haven't really used that aura very much but you know if i can use it i will so let's talk about mapping on this character it has been a very up and down experience kind of like my latency and i gotta say for a while there, I was really worried the build was going to die. So this clip is from like a day and a half ago. And this is the clip I was going to show to, like as an example as why I'm not going to play it anymore. But since then, uh, instead of using Pierce, I started using Chain and Fork. And I, I put on a helmet, a weak one, like I couldn't wear it. With uh, Projectiles Pierce, one additional target. And man, the mapping felt so clean. It felt so much better. So I couldn't really wear the helmet in higher tier map. And I didn't want to show me obliterating a tier 1 or a tier 2 with all the packs dying because I was kind of worried that like it would be really just disingenuous and maybe someone skimming through the video would see that and be like oh I'm gonna roll this and you know they, they get to tier 16 they're like yo this build sucks I didn't want that to happen so right now in terms of clear speed I am level 90 I think or 91 and my gems are still not maxed out because like I said I've been switching them out a lot I also just put on infusion and that has made me like it's cut my deaths by like 90%, honestly. I pretty much never die now, unless it's like a crazy hard rare map, or I'm really high in Scourge, and uh, I get blasted and shotgunned or something. But other than that, I don't really die. Um, I would give the clear speed probably like a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's probably slightly, I want to say a little faster than Bone Shatter, maybe, if you have the Pierce. If It's at least as fast. Obviously not in this clip, but I mean, once you get the gear for it. So, in conclusion, if you are like me and enjoy playing real melee skills, and if you like to double dip like me, and if you really enjoy playing something that no one else plays, let me tell you, I am literally the only person at whatever threshold PoE Ninja picks up playing on the talls embrace there's nobody else anywhere i even checked back in the last league expedition i couldn't find anybody so if you want to be part of figuring out this build with me that'd be awesome let me you know start playing it let me know what you find out i'm gonna be playing it for probably the rest of this league i mean obviously i'm gonna make more characters but i'm gonna be constantly working on it because 
it's clearly able to do end game content. I just don't know what it needs to get there. So basically my plan now is I'm just going to keep playing this character, leveling it up, you know, farming gear, farming maps. And if I get gear, basically whichever character I get gear for first, I'm going to play. You know, if I get a really sick wand, like a, am I using a wand or staff? I can't remember. Whatever the weapon I need for my flame blast character or the cluster jewels. Or if I get minion cluster jewels for my guardian, I'll switch to that. So it kind of depends, you know, RNG. Also, I have some unusual gem uh, heist to run. So, you know, if I get something juicy, might level that up. But expect to see this character again and again throughout this league. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry the video is a little long. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And thank you for watching.